Welcome to the uh, third exercise of the reinforcement learning course. I am Mario Peña and today we will be dealing with dynamic programming. Uh, we'll be going through a simple example that is based on the beer bachelor problem. So for this problem, we have a diagram here uh, on the bottom. Uh, the beer bachelor consists of having three different beers in three different pubs in the town. And in, the, in this diagram, we see that uh, from the starting point at home, we have the decision between two different pubs and then in each of those pubs we have the decision to go up or down in each of those layers and we will arrive to two different pubs one of two different pubs and from those uh, we can again go up or down and arriving at one or two different pubs and then we end up home hopefully so this um, this problem has an, uh, an MDP uh, structure and we're originally giving a 50-50 a policy uh, which we have to uh, we can uh, follow to first evaluate uh, the state values in this uh, in this MDP as we were doing on the previous tutorial using the Bellman expectation equations so for this we have to define some order of the states in the um, a Jupyter Notebook, we're given this order here, which you also see on the right in my screen. And since we have to uh, use the the the, the uh, Bellman expectation equation according to the policy, uh, we have to account for how the policy affects our state transition probability matrix, like uh, this here, and our uh, uh, rewards. In our case, uh, uh, the 50-50 policy is very, um, is very straightforward and we just have to consider that at each point, uh, for example, let me go to the next slide. Um, for example, taking uh, the first row, which is the probability from the starting home uh, state to each of the different ones, we will have a 50-50 policy of going to the all triangle and a 50-50 uh, and a 50% policy of going to the load lamp, which is the third uh, state, and the rest will be zeros. We can go through the different rows of the strain transition probability matrix in order to find this out. Uh, similarly, for the rewards, uh, this will just be the 50% uh, uh, the average between the two paths that are available from each state. So from the first state, we we'll have minus three, minus one over two. That's minus two. For example, for the black sheep state, which is the fourth on the bottom, we have uh, minus six minus five over two, which is minus five point five. Uh, in the example uh, uh, Jupyter notebook, uh, we can see that this uh, state transition uh, again can be defined as I did in the on the right. And in order to solve for the state values we u make use of the Bellman expectation equation solving for Bx uh, which requires this uh, inversion of the identity matrix minus the discounted state transition probability matrix in our case we're considering the state transition probability matrix uh, the, the discount factor to be 0.9 for this uh, code cell in the Jupyter notebook we see that gamma definition the state transition probability matrix, the reward vector, which is already weighted according to the probability with the policy, and we have the we reshape this in order to give it the proper uh, dimensions, and implement here the solution for the Bellman expectation, uh, yeah, Bellman expectation equations, and we print the values, and we can observe here the values for the different states. If we go back to the um, to the diagram of the of the problem, we can interpret the different uh, rewards to each path as the distance between each of the states. So from home, let's think that we have to walk a long, a long time to get to the old triangle, but the load lamp is close to our house, and so on. So we can interpret the values of the different 
states here as the expected discounted distance to walk between paths. Um, for example, if we wanted to not use any discounter, we wanted to do uh, use a gamma equal to one, so infinite horizon. Uh, we have an error, of course, because in that case, this row here will be equal to zero, and the matrix becomes non-invertible. So we see once more how the uh, discount factor has uh, a positive numerical effect when solving for the state values in this inverse matrix uh, manner. And in this way, we can solve uh, for the state values as we were doing last um, on the last tutorial. But in this uh, uh, tutorial, we're interested on alternative uh, ways of uh, going about this problem. And another way of going about this problem would be to do an exhaustive search of the different policies that we can follow in the task uh, provided we're asked to write down all of the possible permutations that we can take, then uh, decide which is the best path, and also make an estimation of what will be the formula to calculate the number of necessary path comparisons. So essentially this means that first we have to consider what happens, for example, in this path here. So in this path we go from the alt triangle to the global trotter to Limerick to home, and the total uh, reward accumulated uh, using a gamma equal to 1 will be minus 10, minus 15. So that first AGLI would be minus 15. And I can go through the different paths exhaustively and we can see the, the results uh, that were collected here. We can check here that that a quick calculation was correct and doing, uh, doing uh, for doing all of this we will have to uh, exhaustively check uh, the value for all of the possible paths and uh, the number of possible paths that we have we can think of each of these layers and we're always evolving from one layer to the next here and from this layer we can all only add home so in the first layer we have a possibility of two transitions on the first la second layer also two transitions and so on so in each of the th first three layers uh, we can make one of two choices so the number of paths that are available to us is 2 to the third power which is equal to 8 now in order to uh, select what is the best uh, the best policy we have to compare, let's start for the first from the first value, compare this to this value, and we see that the first value, the first path is the best. Comparing to this, we still uh, remain with this, we remain with the first one, we remain with the first one, we remain with the first one. Now, this is our best policy that we found, and we make one more comparison, and uh, we can f be sure that this is the uh, optimal policy. So with the number of comparisons that we have to do in order to arrive at the optimal policy is the number of possible paths minus one because we have to compare each state to the last best found uh, but we don't have to compare a, uh, a path to itself. So that's the minus one over there. But still, if we can think of um, a more complex problem, for example, imagining that we add more layers to the right of this and w in the middle of those options we, st we also have uh, an additional bar to, to choose from then uh, the number of possible paths becomes 243 and the number of comparisons that we have to introduce in order to find the optimal policy will be 242 this is uh, less than ideal and this is a justification for using dynamic programming and in dynamic programming we will make use of the our knowledge of the problem structure which is an MDP and we will recache uh, the information already calculated or estimated about the problem in the in the shape of state values so that is what we will do next
So the idea of the dynamic programming is, is to sort of, instead of having to do all of these paths, to uh, re, uh, reuse all of this information. And we will make use of the uh, Bellman uh, optimality equation for this. And we will estimate the best uh, state uh, in the according to the iteration as the maximum of the uh, reward that I can find with a, a given action plus the discounted uh, next value state but in this case the discount uh, factor uh, is equal to 1 so and also we can do in place updates so we don't have to wait until the the whole problem the whole value vector has been solved for in one iteration to utilize that information so in order to do this, uh, we can also take a look at the pseudocode that was provided in the lecture. First, we need f uh, first thing we need for this uh, dynamic programming method is actually a full model of the of the MDP. So this is a model-based um, method. We need to define some parameter delta, uh, which will be the accuracy uh, threshold for which will determine when we will, will we stop. We uh, make an initial estimation, an initial guess for the all of the state values, which is arbitrary, uh, except in the case of the terminal state, which must be zero. This is because the expected uh, value, the expected return from, that from the terminal state is by definition zero, because we cannot go anywhere from there. And then uh, we initialize the delta value as zero and for each of the states we calculate uh, we make an estimation of the state value according to as we said the maximum between all of the actions of the reward and the expected uh, value the discounted uh, value of the next state we do this until our error is lower than our defined threshold and um, based on this, we can also find the the a policy, an optimal policy based on these values. So, if we go from the start to the end, as we see here on the right, we the our first estimation of all of for all of the values can be zero. So that will be this first iteration. We make zero all of the values. For our next iteration the the value of the start will be uh, the maximum between the reward plus the next value of each of the paths but the next value uh, of both paths is zero according to our previous estimation so we just choose the maximum reward which in this case is minus one the same happens for the old triangle we choose minus two for load lamp uh, we choose minus three and so on we can complete this row but the problem is that choosing this order of states the previous calculated state was very trivial so we're not really reutilizing information now in the second iteration uh, again if we look at the start we can compare the possibility of doing the lower path which is minus one plus the value of the load lamp, which will be in this case 3, so minus 1, minus 3, minus 4, or going up, which will be minus 3 and the value of the old triangle minus 2. So this up here will be minus 5, this will be minus 4, so we choose the maximum of those and we get minus 4 and we can continue um, filling up this table and we will need multiple iterations to do this. But we see that this is not the best way of utilizing our data because uh, by the nature of this MDP if we go in this direction we're not really utilizing that same row of values for the calculation instead of doing this we can go the other direction and using the same principles we initialize in the first iteration all of the values at zero and then we go backwards so for the fat Lewis point the value of the next state we know is going to stay zero it's always zero and so this value actually 
is the maximum possible minus seven and this is the true state value uh, or the true optimal uh, state value or the of the the true value with following the optimal policy for limericks is the same and this stay constant and now for example for the black sheep we can compare uh, minus six minus seven which will be minus 13 or minus five minus six will be minus 11 and we choose minus 11 and because everything to the right of that state was already uh, fixed we only don't need one iteration in there to uh, at arrive at our optimal uh, policy or our the, the state values of our optim optimal policy and in order to do this we only need to perform five comparisons we will need to perform a comparison for this state this state this state this state and this state so we went from having to perform uh, what was it uh, seven comparisons to having to perform only five but in the in the other case in the case in which uh, uh, we will have uh, three to the to the fi to the fifth power of uh, possible states and uh, or possible paths and three to the fifth minus one um, possible uh, necessary comparisons. There will be 242, and using this uh, dynamic programming, the value that we will have is three times five minus one. So. Th we go from having to do 242 comparisons in the exhaustive search to just having to do 14 comparisons in the dynamic programming case. So this is very powerful, but again, it requires that we have knowledge of the uh, MDP. The last task in this uh, exercise, again, we all you in the tutorial, um, Jupyter Notebook, you have all of this um, exploited out and how these optimal policies, uh, optimal choices can be uh, decided uh, with different examples and you also have the, the solution table as is provided. And the last, uh, the last task here is to consider a little bit more complexity in this problem in the shape of stochastic rewards. We saw in the um, forest problem uh, given in the lectures how the stochastic nature of the of the MDP could affect the state transitions. So, for example, uh, in the forest uh, problem, if we take the action of waiting, we have an alpha probability of disaster and arriving at the gone state and one minus alpha of arriving at the medium forest size. In our case, instead of having stochastic nature of state transitions, we'll have stochastic nature of uh, rewards. So let's imagine that we know that in the city, uh, the different pubs have happy hour on a given number of days per pub. So, for example, in the Global Trotter, we know that there's a happy hour once a week, but we're not sure when. So, we can think of assigning, uh, with a probability of 1 over 7, a bigger reward to the uh, Global Trotter, and with a probability of 6 over 7, a uh, non-reward, uh, other than the reward that we were uh, assigning given the distance to the pub. The same, for example, in the Black Sheep, we can think of four days out of seven there's, there's um, happy hour over there but we don't like so much that happy hour as we like it in the, is in the global trotter and so our probability to for the different rewards uh, is redefined but the the choice or the the state transition after the choice does, uh, doesn't change so once i decide to go to a global trotter i will always arrive to a global trotter the only thing uncertain is how much reward i get for this and in this way, the um, uh, the MDP becomes a little bit more complex. We can go back to the um, the pseudocode in the for the value iteration dynamic programming method, and ask ourselves where in this pseudocode we see this possibility for the stochastic nature of the rewards. 
and it's a little bit subtle but it's actually in that uh, letter there we can see that's written in, calli in calligraphy and this convention in that in this uh, lecture is that this is an expectation value so we have to think of this uh, R value in the pseudocode as the expected reward given uh, a state and an action so that's where the stochastic nature of the problem um, appears in our in our code and this will be a representation of the of the new MDP that is given with these uh, stochastic rewards we can see in the in the Jupyter notebook how the the probability for a positive reward is defined for the different states and with the first row being the choice of going up and the uh, second row being the choice of going down we uh, the this is only the probability of the getting an extra reward and this matrix here would be the that extra reward that can happen and with a probability of 1 minus pxr plus we will get this not extra reward which will be zero for all cases here given all of this this here we have in the right uh, the representation of the um, of the ndp and uh, we can apply our uh, value iteration uh, uh, algorithm in order to find the optimal policy under these conditions so in order to do this we first we um, we will have to define in python the the the, the rewards that are fixed according to the distance in the different paths which is what is given by this um, system in the right which was what we were working on with the uh, uh, with from the beginning we have the probability for the uh, additional reward and the reward in the case uh, that that probability uh, is fulfilled and so the expected rewards will be defined as the sum between the fixed reward plus the probability of extra reward times that extra reward plus 1 minus the probability of the non-reward times the non-reward which is always zero we create an, an initialization for the values which will be uh, will do as a zeros array and we define some uh, threshold uh, the lower tolerance, uh, tolerance boundary for the error between the estimation of the of the values we initialize this value of error at 100 before the while loop and create some index for the number of iterations and then we will run this loop until the error is uh, 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 mean while the error is bigger than our threshold in inside of that iteration we increase the iteration index we redefine the error as zero and for all of the states except the terminal state what we will do is what we saw on the pseudocode let me go back to that in which we stored the initial guess for the value of that state we calculate the up and the down value and I will go into detail about this code in a second then we define we we decide uh, for the maximum between those two options and we redefine the error as the maximum between the current error and the absolute value of the difference between our original guess of the state value and our updated guess of the state value uh, for this code let me zoom out a little bit so we see this there in order to calculate the up value uh, the up value will be the expected rewards in the case of up which was the first uh, row on that state index and the value of the following state the index for the following state 
uh, would be uh, can be calculated in a according to this formula which we can make sense of it uh, sort of observing this table that I prepared so let's imagine that we are uh, in state 0 the next state if we go up will be state 1 which is the owl triangle and if we go down it will be state 2 that is the load lamp and we can make this comparison for each of the states and we can observe that this sequence follows a pattern in which for the up uh, option the next state is that state value plus one plus the modulus of the state index uh, the the modul modulus two of that state index that means the remainder of dividing that state index over two so in this case would be one plus one plus one this case one uh, two plus one plus zero three and so on and we can find this formula for the next state index for the up uh, choice and we can find that for the down choice the next state index uh, can be found with the same formula but uh, giving a 2 over there this is in order to make the code a little bit more compact but you could also define such a table uh, for the for knowing what's the next state according to the different actions and so this gives us the up value we know that if we have in state 5 or 6 the up value and the down value is the same because we don't have a uh, choice in the state uh, 5 or 6 we only have the same we, we always have the same value and we are not we are not including uh, state 7 in our um, evaluation we're removing that from the for loop uh, and with this uh, that's sort of the explanation of what's going on in those two small lines but the rest of it is just development of the optimality equation at work uh, you can find other ways of programming such a uh, such an algorithm but in the end it amounts to the same thing this is a little bit uh, faster and we can arrive at the new state uh, values and these are the state values of the optimal policy because this is value iteration and in order to find our optimal policy from those values we can do one more loop going through all of the states except the terminal state and observe which of the actions gives us the uh, gives us the state value which is uh, which is the best so we again can calculate for each of the states the up value and the down value and if the up value is better we decide that we will go up and if the uh, down value is better we will go down and so we can find our policy which according to the different states we see that's always going down and in the end we've graduated here on the on the left you can see a scheme of such a uh, of the result and you're also invited to with this information here solving the dynamic programming uh, by hand once more i would suggest going from from left from right to left there and you can observe how the different, uh, how the optimal state values are uh, the same as the action value for uh, the optimal uh, choice, and how those those sto stochastic probabilities uh, affect uh, the probability of each of each path. And we have here marked the optimal policy. Uh, which of course must include all of the states because its state must be uh, the optimal policy must be optimal with, with respect to any state and that is the the solution of this of this tutorial i hope this clari clarifies a little bit the the concept of dynamic programming in the end what we're doing is to try to find op uh, uh, better ways of uh, utilizing the information we have about both the structure of the problem 
and the uh, calculations that we've already performed, all the all the information that we've gathered about this problem. But in the end, this is a model-based approach, so it has a very large limitations, as we were discussing in the uh, Q&A session today. And the next tutorial will deal with the application of the uh, Monte Carlo method to a uh, racetrack environment. I thank you all for your attendance today. Have a good day.